Hello, dear participants. As an interpreter, I'm speaking on behalf of Dr. Alexa Rokin, PhD and Executive Director of the National Ayurvedic Medical Association of Russia. Today we are going to talk about emptiness of blood syndrome, which matches to Ranjaka disorder in Vata Pitta constitution. Let's start with basics. Constitution of a person is a complex of stable structural, anatomic, physiological and psychological features of the body which had been formed under the influence of the innate and acquired factors. Each constitution has its own weaknesses. Knowing, knowing the constitution type of a person allows the specialist to determine the predispositions to different diseases, to start working on preventive measures and treatment. There are three basic constitutional types which, from a physiological point of view, are regulation systems. Relationship between the regulation systems form nine constitution types based on dual combination of doshas depending on the dominance of one of them. And the tenth type is called tridosh and it is known as a balance of all three doshas in an individual. It means that doshas have harmonized relationship with each other and give a proper response to the surrounding environment. This is a chart of matching of constitution types or syndromes in Ayurveda and uh, Chinese medicine which we traditionally are going through. And in fat type you can see the syndromes that we have already discussed. And t today it is emptiness of blood. Let's look at the clinical example of the syndrome. If a group of specialists examined the same patient with emptiness of blood, they would all conclude with the same observation. Everything that is supposed to be pink or red in the person is white or pale. Everything would be pale, skin, tongue, nails, conjunctiva. If it is a woman, she would say that as a rule she, her menses are usually four or even more days late and the bleeding itself is very poor and pale. She would claim that she often suffers from dizziness, weakness, insomnia, superficial sleep as she wakes up several times per night. Beside that, she would complain that she always has to make notes in her organizer because her memory became so weak and poor. According to these symptoms, you could make a, a conclusion that the woman suffers from the emptiness of blood syndrome. Once having heard the diagnosis, the patient may start arguing, saying that she also had noticed paleness and she gone to hospital and made a test and it showed that hemoglobin is a norm and she doesn't have an anemia. That is why it is important to point out that emptiness of blood is often a direct path to anemia, but not necessarily in every single case. Let's dip into detailed description of the syndrome. First of all, it is a special state of constitution developed as a result of the lack of blood. We say that the lack of blood conditioned by malfunctioning of one of the subdoshas, Ranjaka Pitta. It starts development of various states and processes in the body that depend on the amount of blood, its nourishing and moistening functions. In case in Vata Pitta constitution all the doshas are located in the range of norm, the person would not get the syndrome of empty blood. The syndrome would take place only in case of substantial imbalance as the one that we see in the picture. Let's try to visualize the appearance of the person more vividly so you could recognize it easily in the future. You would notice pale face, atrophy of skin, it would be thin and even transparent with a slight yellowish pigment. Uh, the people with the syndrome would complain on itching or, or and hair loss, early baldness and gray hair. You'd also see that the roots of nails and hair are very dry and thin and dull. Lips and tongue are pale as well as the mucosal membranes, also with a possible yellowish tint which the specialists call icterus. In general, Vata Pitta people have a tendency to forgetfulness and if they have a serious imbalance developed to empty blood syndrome, they would suffer from extremely poor memory. Those people often suffer from orthostatic collapse, it means that once they get up from bed and change a horizontal position to a vertical one, they would get a slight blackout and dizziness as a result of the sharp redistribution of blood in the body. The people have uh, vigorous dreams that make them wake up at night. Another two important sy symptoms are dryness and spasms of limbs. What prime elements are involved in the formation of the syndrome? 
In case of this constitution, it is, a qui it is quite hard to point out two dominating elements. So at first sight, one might think that this picture mixes four components. Let's try to analyze. As the ether element would be dominant in the combination, it is the biggest in the picture. Accordingly, the fire element is subdominant. Thus, these two elements would influence the development of the syndrome, ether and fire. As we already mentioned in the previous lectures, domination of two elements doesn't mean the absence of the other two. Water and air would also be responsible for the development of certain symptoms of the syndrome, but they would be minor. As for the soil element, here we may have a lot of problems, as there is an absolute lack of this element in the body. After examination with the Vedapal's program, the classical picture of the syndrome would be that ether is dominant, air and fire are subdominant, with fire staying in the range of norms, so these people do not have a tendency to tikshna agni. The first hieroglyph that you see on the left, corresponding to emptiness of blood, reminds the branches of the vessels. Semantically, it denotes a substance uh, which maintains life and provides nourishment and moistening. So it is not literally the blood, but a wider notion, including complicated processes. Another hieroglyph denotes emptiness. Sanskrit notion of Ranjaka means the one that colors. Ranjaka works toward transformation of rasa into rakta. Rasa, being one of the dhatu, represents itself fluid substances of the body, including plasma that contains nutrients taken from the gastrointestinal tract in the process of digestion. So Ranjaka helps to transform rasa into rakta, and by rakta we mean blood cells. The malfunction of Ranjaka inhibits the process of creation of the blood cells. According to Sushruta Samhita, Ranjaka is located in two organs, liver and spleen. Thus, liver and spleen disorder causes the disruption of Ranjaka. David Frohli mentions, uh, mentions that Ranjaka manifests itself not only uh, through these two organs, but also through the blood. We also say that Ranjaka is one of the subdoshas of fire and it is associated with the complicated physiological processes in the body such as ham metabolism and iron metabolism. From the point of view of modern medicine, Ranjaka is an equivalent to a ham metabolism controller. What is ham? Ham is a complex structural part of enzymes. It is often associated with hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a part of the large group of enzymes, cytochromes, is in many cells, especially liver cells. There are also catalase and peroxidase enzymes, which is a special weapon of the immune cells in a fight with bacteria, infectious agents, and mutating cells causing oncology. Thus you can see that Ranjaka is not only hemoglobin, as it has much wider an influence from the point of view of physiology. As a result of the process of degradation of ham enzymes and cells, biliburin is getting produced, which has a strong coloring effect, thus dyeing the body in yellow. So there is a chance that people of vata, uh, pitta vata constitution with Ranjaka malfunction may have a tendency to yellowish pigmentation. Disorders of Ranjaka pitta are connected with liver and spleen. According to authorities, Ranjaka pitta malfunction occurs in weakness of liver. Liver is the very organ responsible for the protein syn synthesis. Problems with the liver should be a first sign of Ranjaka pitta disorder. Spleen is the basic reason of the development of the syndrome. Spleen disorder would inevitably lead to development of anemia. Traditional Chinese medicine claims that one of the causes of development of emptiness of blood may be an innate deficiency of blood given to a child due to its presence in the parents. According to Ayurveda, it is karma that gave this body to this soul so the person could develop the needed features or talents due to this shortcoming. Another reason is an improper diet. Vegans, raw eaters are in the group of risks as they do not get uh, needed nourishment. Intestinal parasite also can be the reason of the syndrome as they suck all the nutrients coming with food, disturb mucosa and feed themselves with blood. Another reason ex is exhaustion, long reflection, long thinking with uh, 
anxiety, which is typical for Vata people, disturbs spleen. And though spleen is not uh, the organ that produces the blood, it plays a significant role in the pr process of, of production. And last two reasons are blood congestion and prolonged serious illnesses. Let's see cardiointervalogram indicators of empty blood. First goes the spectrum tab. Here we check total power indicator first. In empty blood syndrome, total power index would be in the range between 500 and 1000 milliseconds squared. It tells us that the indicator is located in the range of the decrease of energy, which is kind of a given feature for, for people of this constitution type. We know that the sum of very low frequency, low frequency and high frequency values equals 100% of the total power of the spectrum. Very low frequency indicator here takes about 50% of the power, low frequency is 40% and high frequency is 10 or 20% of the total power. Indices of the time analysis tab. An average duration of the heart cycle index is the most important for us in the tab and it will be in the range of uh, 675 to 775 milliseconds. Mode is 700 milliseconds. Attention index in average is above uh, 200 up to 500 conventional units. Mode amplitude is 0 0.4 to 0 0.6. A restoration index is also having a tendency to decrease. It is uh, 8 uh, up to 12 conventional units. In young index is 250 to 400 conventional units, which shows tension of Pingalanadi. Adequacy index higher than 60 conventional units, which tells us that but the body requires the increase of the metabolic resources, but the amount of the resources is limited, which meaning that there is a small capacity and great demands. Centralization index is below two uh, conventional units. Integral indices, uh, stress index in, is in the range between 200 to 500. In index of the morphofunctional state is in the range of 50 to 75, with a tendency to shift to a lower border of norm. Adaptation price can vary, but in general has a tendency to shift to the zone of above 50%, telling us that the resources are mainly spent on the usual life processes. Uh, the speed of biological aging is increased and greater, and there is a greater degree of wear and tear of the physical body. Pulse characteristics in empty blood syndrome. You can see a cardiointervalogram typical for the syndrome. We can find some kind of rigidness of the pulse in the range from 150 to 250 and from 280 to 350. We can also see the features of the jumping Manduka pulse and low amplitude Sarpa pulse. Frequency of the heartbeat or Vega is above 85 beats per minute, which would be another indicator telling us about the possible presence of the syndrome. Uh, you can see Bala characteristics highlighted in red. People of pure Vata has weak Bala. Pita people have a very strong Bala, which means that people of Vata Pita type have a moderate Bala. The device may identify it as a Kapha Vikriti because here the averaging of Vata and Pita pulse would bring the indicator to Kapha zone. The program cannot take into account all the nuances, and you as an expert should see them yourself. Vata Pita people in imbalance would have a tendency to Vishama Agni or unstable di digestion fire. The percentage that you see next to the picture shows the features of the regional or local blood flow in the different areas, areas and zones of the body. The total level of bioenergy is 40%, 40%, which again tells us that people of this constitution type have a tendency to low energy level. There are so-called trigger organs, which as a rule uh, would have an increased tension, showing that there are they are very organs having a risk of development of the disease. We are talking about liver, gallbladder and small intestine. Normal value is 8% but these organs would have level of tension above 10%. 
With that, you'd see a Panavata tension associated with colon and certain tension of Pranavata associated with bronchial pulmonary systems. What illnesses are typical in empty blood or Anjaka disorder? First of all, these people would have a tendency to an iron deficiency state. And here, most of the people have a latent iron deficiency. Two main things to discuss are anemic syndrome and sideropenic syndrome. Tendency to anemia is a typical companion of a constitutional emptiness of blood. First of all, it is a clinic uh, hematological syndrome. It means that it has certain clinical manifestations first, and there are certain quantitative values that one should take into account to evaluate results of the treatment. This syndrome is characterized, first of all, through a decrease of hemoglobin in the blood. And this is the key moment in all the pathophysiology physiology of this process. As a rule, in more acute stages of anemia, along with hemoglobin, the amount of red blood cells or erythrocytes would also reduce, which leads to tissue hypoxia that prevents the production of energy. That is why people of this type has this con con constitutionally conditioned low level energy. This state is called hypoxemia or low level of oxygen in the blood and as a result a total hypoxia of the tissue starts developing. Today it is assumed that uh, the person has anemia if the level of hemoglobin is below 130 gram per liter. The number of erythrocytes in men is below 4 multiplied by 10 in the 12th order per 1 liter and uh, women for women, it is below 120 gram per liter, with a decrease of erythrocytes to 3.5 and lower. There is a process that influences the creation of erythrocytes, and it is called erythropoiesis. In adults, this process takes place in the bone marrow and starts with a stem cell that start production of the link of the red blood cells, and as a result, we get mellow erythrocytes containing hemoglobin. There are two types of abnormalities of erythrocytes. It is microcyte uh, hypochromanemia, when due to the lack of hemoglobin, erythrocytes get pale and small, and megoblastic anemia, when erythrocytes contain a nucleus and have a deeper red color. There is another interesting fact. Uh, here you can see a graph. Abscissa scale stands for a lifespan or ontogenesis. The ordinate scale shows the percentage of cells in different bone structures where the process of er erythropoiesis is taking place. This information is highly important for MARMA therapy used to improve erythropoiesis. You should pay attention to the fact uh, in what bone structures the process of erythropoiesis takes place before the age of 25 and after the age of 25 or 30. It is important that you should use this information in your MARMA therapy practice. Classification of types of anemia. Modern med medicine divides anemia into three types. First, anemia is a result of blood loss. Second, anemia is a result of disruption of the process of creation of the red blood cells and hemoglobin. And the last large group of anemias is a result of increased blood, dis blood destruction. Anemia is a result of disruption of the process of creation of the red blood cells and hemoglobin, and its turn is also divided into several groups. Uh, first is iron deficiency anemia, iron redistribution anemia, iron saturated anemia associated with disorder of the formation of hem, me megaloblastic anemia associated with disordered synthesis of DNA, hyperproliferative anemia, anemia associated with bone marrow fa failure, uh, metaplastic anemia, and this erythropoiesis anemia. Iron redistribution anemia means that iron needed for production of hemoglobin cannot be transported from the storage depot uh, to plasma and uh, to the bone marrow to be involved in the metabolic process of the hemoglobin synthesis. For a normal hematopoiesis, we need about 25 mg of iron per day, but only 1 or 2 mg is getting absorbed with food daily. 
The lack of iron is compensated by the process of reutilization of iron f from the old erythrocytes with the help of macrophage cells in kidneys and spleen. In this type of anemia, for some reason, microphages do not give iron from the old red blood cells to the new ones. The reasons of the disruption of the process of reutilization of iron might be acute and chronic infections and inflammatory diseases, especially those with uh, separation, uh, inflammatory diseases of the lungs, kidneys, urinary system, abdominal organs, bones, biliary tract, and so on, tuberculosis, rheumatoid arthritis, hepatitis, and oncology and alcoholic liver disease, and uh, why the inflammation processes become the reason of this type of anemia. As we already mentioned, HEM is not only hemoglobin, but also a part of enzyme helping the immune system. Uh, once the inflammation process starts, the body decides that it is more important to find, fight the inflammation than to fight anemia, as inflammation can cause a sudden death. That is why microphages direct all the needed sources to help the immune system. The next type is an iron-saturated anemia, which happens as a result of disruption of the synthesis of HEM itself, because for some reason iron doesn't get included in hemoglobin. In this case, iron is accumulated in tissues, which means that it would be a crucial mistake to treat a person with such type of anemia, giving him or her more iron. The reasons of iron-saturated anemia uh, is innate genetic defects of certain enzymes, acquired defect of enzymes of the various stages of the synthesis of the syn synthesis of porphyrins, drugs, for example, in the case uh, the patient take uh, takes a very strong anti-tuberculosis medicine, lead intoxication, alcohol. Uh, conditioned by certain diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic renal failure, and hematoblastosis. Scheme of pathogenesis of uh, congenial acquired iron-saturated anemia. The activity of the enzyme gets disturbed and it has two consequences. First, development of anemia as a result of the lack of hemoglobin and development of secondary hematochromatosis as a result of accumulation of iron in the body. Megaloblastic anemia is caused by the disruption of DNA synthesis as a result of the lack of vitamin B and folic acid. Basic facts on a metabolism of the vitamin B12. It is found in meat, liver, kidneys, egg yolk, cheese and milk. With a full diet, the daily diet of a person contains up to uh, 30 mg of vitamin B12. Per day, 6 up to 9 mg is absorbed, uh, 2 uh, to 5 mg is excreted. The daily requirement of vitamin B12 is uh, uh, from 2 to 7 micrograms. Hypothetically, if a person stops getting vitamin B12 with food completely, there is about 2 uh, to 5 milligrams of the vitamin in liver, which is enough for another 3 or 5 years. Schema of absorption of the vitamin B12. In the food, the, mit the vitamin is bounded with proteins. This bind gets destroyed in the stomach under the influence of the acid, and now the vitamin is bound with R proteins. Then it comes to the intestine where it gets bounded with in intrinsic factor. Then, with the help of transporting protein, vitamin B12 comes into cells. Here are the causes of the development of uh, vitamin B12 deficiency anemia. It can be disorder of the secretion of gastric intrinsic factor, disorder of absorption of vitamin B12 in the small intestine, competitive spending of vitamin B12, increased consum consumption of vitamin B12, violation of intake of vitamin, reduction of vitamin in liver uh, cirrhosis, violation of transportation of vitamin and indeficiency of transabalamin. The mechanism of pathogenesis of the vitamin B12 deficiency anemia is quite simple. As a result of disruption of the process of creation, absorption or intake of vitamin B12, there comes a deficiency of the vitamin. 
which in its turn may lead to atrophy of the gastrointestinal mucosa, disorder of hematopoiesis anemia, leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, disorder of metabolism of fatty acids, the accumulation of toxic metabolites, nervous system damage such as a funicular myelosis which you can observe in chronic alcoholics who even being sober have this peculiar drunk swag folio deficiency anemia also leads to megaloblastic type of anemia associated with disruption of the influence of vitamin b12 on the synthesis of the, uh, dna in the deficiency of folic acid Megaloblastic erythrocytes are identified as defective erythrocytes by the cells of the immune system in the spleen. The immune cells damage megaloblastic erythrocytes, thus cutting their lifespan. There are two main things important to know about folic acid is that it is a water soluble and thermal and thermolobile vitamin. Thermolobile vitamin is a vitamin that gets destroyed in the thermal treatment. It means that all the products which contain the vitamin should be taken raw in case you want to get it from, from the food. And now we are going to talk about the most important type of anemia from the perspective of, of our lecture. It is a, an iron deficiency anemia. Uh, 50 uh, 15 to 20 percent of the world's population, according to World Health Organization, suffer from e either latent iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia. And as it is an iron deficiency anemia, it means deficit of iron not only in the blood serum but also its deficiency in all the storages. Latent character of anemia means that there is no clinical manifestations and it cannot be identified by the common blood tests. Basic facts about iron metabolism. The human body receives about 15 to 20 grams of iron daily from food, which is quite a big amount of iron, but only 2 or 3 milligrams of iron per day is absorbed in the duodenum and proximal parts of the jejunum. Jejunum, I'm sorry. There, where does all the iron go? Uh, about 20 mg of iron is daily consumed in erythropoiesis. Iron erythron needs about 3 gram of iron. Uh, about 1.5 grams goes to iron depot. Iron also goes to iron tissue uh, and transferrin. Ham metabolism in scheme is quite simple. Iron comes with food gets to blood, then storage depot of liver or spleen or to the bone marrow where to be involved in the process of or him and of him and erythrocytes synthesis. Absorption of iron from food in the intestine happens only with the help of mucosal epotransferrin. Epotransferrin gets into enterocyte captures iron and transfers iron to plasma transferrin protein. The amount of iron that can be taken from food depends directly on the amount of epitransferrin, which means that it directly depends on the wor work of regulation system standing for angiocapita and associated with the liver. Ferritin is a unique molecule which contains an iron nuclear of about 3,000 of atoms of iron. Ferritin molecule is always the quickest source of iron in case of need. So the presence of ferritin is a substantial marker of presence of iron in the blood. The portion of ferritin in men is 85 to 130 micrograms per liter. In women it is 50, 58 to 150 milligrams per liter. Hemosiderin is another pool of iron in the storage depot of the body. Hemosiderin is often called a polymer of ferritin. The problem is that when hemosiderin is getting formed, iron becomes three valens, which means it cannot be participate it cannot participate in the process of erythropoiesis. It takes certain enzymes and metabolic processes to convert hemosiderin back into ferritin. That is why it is called slow. Iron is not water soluble. It means that if it comes to blood in pure, it will become a sediment. So it it would not be transferable. So there is a special protein plasma transferrin which makes iron water soluble. The, fra the fraction of this protein 
is directly responsible for transportation of iron in mainly is mainly produced by liver, which is again associated with Ranjaka Pitta. Causes of the iron deficiency anemia. It can be chronic blood loss. One milliliter of blood contains near half of the milligram of iron. Loss of two teaspoons of blood per day, which is not that much considering the fact that our vessels contain about five to six liters of blood, will lead to anemia. The most common reason of blood loss is uterine blood loss. Normal menses is about uh, maximum six, 60 milliliters, which means that uh, 15 to 30 milligrams spent daily. Daily intake, uh, 2 milligrams. Per month, 60 milligrams. Full nutrition covers these losses. It is very dangerous for teenager girls uh, to become vegans. Veganism is a very strict form of vegetarianism which will inevitably lead to a serious iron deficiency. Dysfunctional uterine bleeding is a result of endometriosis, uterine fibroids, and intrauterine contraceptives. The most common cause in men is gastrointestinal bleeding, ulcers and chronic erosions of the gastrointestinal mucosa, and parasites such as hookworms. An increased iron need takes place in pregnancy, childbirth and lactation. The first trimester in, is the norm the second increases by 3 mg per day. In the third trimester, it becomes 4 mg per day. The expenditure of iron for one child is 600 mg. It will take about 2 or 3 years to restore the, sto the stocks by proper nutrition. If the birth intervals are about 2 or 3 years, it will lead to anemia. Pregnancy contributes to the manifestation of latent iron deficiency. Another period or, uh, of an increased iron need is puberty and growth in adolescents with latent iron deficiency, uh, whose mothers suffered from iron deficiency anemia. Intense sports activities can also be a cause of increased iron need. Uh, sportsmen need an extra nutritious diet to compensate the huge loss of iron after the training or competition. One of the possible reasons of iron deficiency is inf insufficient intake of iron with food. 90% of raw eaters and vegans in 3 or 5 years get nutritive iron deficiency anemia. It is not harmful to be a vegetarian and follow a milk and crops diet, but being a vegan is physiologically dangerous and unreasonable. It makes much of a benefit if you do, not fa if you do fasting or become a vegan or a raw, raw eater for a short period of time and then go back to a physiologically proper diet. It was already mentioned that anemia may have one of two dangerous consequences, anemic syndrome and cytopenic syndrome. Anemic syndrome has the following, following clinical manifestation. First, uh, general signs, weakness, fatigue, every time these people go anywhere, they get tired quickly, want to sit down, have rest or sleep, uh, have this decreased performance and memory, drowsiness, dizziness, low heartbeat, shortness of breath during exercise, orthostatic collapse. Objectively, they have pale skin and mucous mem uh, pale mucous membranes, sometimes with a greenish or yellowish tint, no blush in cheeks, characterized by morning pasty around the eyes, bags under the eyes. Those people also get problems with cardiovascular system. Syndrome a syndrome such as tachycardia, breathlessness, arrhythmia, systolic tinnitus in all points of uh, osculation, a tendency to hypertension. Cytopenic syndrome or iron deficiency of tissues. One of the signs of development of anemia is a, a perversion of taste. A person would desire to eat chalk or coal and a uh, perversion of sense of smell, a varnish or paint, uh, a person would want to, to smell paint or something. People with this syndrome may experience passion for spicy, salty, sore and savory uh, food, thus subconsciously trying to stimulate digestion and, and absorption. Expressed muscle weakness as a result of myoglobin deficiency, angular stomatitis, glossitis, pain, red, redness, 
uh, atrophy of the papillary the tendency to periodontal disease and caries. Atrophy of the mucosa of the gastrointestinal tract um, and atrophic gastritis. Another symptom is the symptom of blue sclera um, because of thinning of the sclera in the result of disruption of synthesis of collagen and uh, transulus uh, and translucent of the choroid. People may also suffer from weakness of the sphincter of the bladder. Uh, another possible symptom is subfebrile condition or a pro prolonged state of having a low fever. Predisposi predisposition to respiratory, viral, and infectious inflammatory processes. The disease is uh, the disease is in reparative processes. The decrease, I'm sorry, in reparative processes. Diagnostic of the prelate and iron deficiency. One of the most important signs you should pay attention to is the decrease in serum ferritin uh, in a depot organs. The patient would have below uh, 12 micrograms per one liter of, bl of blood serum. Diagnostic of the latent deficiency. Uh, again, there are no signs of anemia or anemic syndrome, and hemoglobin is a norm. But the clinical signs of sideropenic syndrome starts developing, and uh, you'd see the decrease of iron in serum below 3 uh, micromole uh, per liter in men and below uh, 11.5 mole uh, per liter in women. The main features of iron deficiency are uh, the decrease in hemoglobin, the decrease in the number of red blood cells, and there are minor indicators such as changing the sh of the shape and size of erythrocytes in the, in the blood smear, hypochromic anemia, and so on. It is important to know the differences between iron deficiency and iron transfer anemias to have an idea where it is necessary to increase the intake of iron and where it would be a harm. Uh, for example, you can see uh, on the left column uh, features such as sideropenic syndrome, uh, serum iron, uh, blood ferritin, and uh, you can see their presence in iron deficiency and iron transfer anemia. For example, in iron deficiency, the uh, sideropenic syndrome is highly typical. In iron transfer anemia, it, it is absent. Uh, serum iron in iron deficiency is low, and in iron transfer anemia, it is normal. Another table shows us a diagnostic differences of iron deficiency and iron saturation anemia. Uh, you can see that, for example, in iron deficiency anemia, sideropenic syndrome is typical and it is absent in iron saturation anemia. In iron deficiency anemia, uh, blood serum ferritin decreased and in iron saturation anemia it is increased. Thus, uh, going through these tables, you may, you may make a conclusion where it is important to use iron in treatment and when it can make harm. Now some information on cardio-intervallographic -inter criteria of anemia. Analyzing the meridian tap, you'd find a combination of features showing the presence of anemia in a person. The channels involved are stomach channel, spleen channel, liver channel, uh, kidneys channel as a result of possible lack of qi energy, and as kidneys associated with reproductive system, the tension can be connected with the blood loss. As for subdoshas, uh, First of all, uh, you'd find tension of Ranjaka Pitta on the background of law of Lambaka Kabha and combination of certain disorder of Samana Vata and Apana Vata, which in general show tension of Vata Dosha. If we checked Hatu in Nidana Tep, we'd see an interesting sit situation of low rasa and tension of Rakta, which always shows the disruption in the process of transformation of rasa into Rakta or transformation of nutrients to blood cells. If it is followed by tension of maja or bone marrow, it is an additional sign of anemia. Restorative measures in emptiness of blood would be elimination of etiological factors, restorative diet, thytocorrection or the, of the syndrome, and acupressure. Influence of different components on the iron absorption. There are products that enhancing or inhibiting absorption of iron. Inhibiting products are strong tea and coffee, milk as it has lots of proteins and can bind iron thus standing on the way of its absorption. People who eat only plant food or raw food get a lot of 
phthalates that also bind iron and inhibit its absorption. Now let's check what product enhance absorption of iron in the body. And increased acidity uh, improves absorption of iron. That is why aside the vitamin B12, we recommend people medicines containing acids such as ascorbic acid, organic acids and so on. Fructose is also a component which should be taken constantly by people having an iron absorption disorder. Being absorbed, fructose is able to capture divalent iron. Animal proteins have the same effect as they capture iron being absorbed with am amino acids. Products rich in iron. There are two types of iron, hem iron and non-hem iron. Hem iron is contained in products of animal nature. It is a divalent iron which may which you may find in meat by products such as liver, kidneys, lungs, heart, fish and so on. Non hem iron is iron of a plant nature. Plant iron is trivalent, so it cannot be easily absorbed in the body as it should be converted into divalent iron first. Anyway, we can get sufficient proportion of iron from such products as sesame, legumes, certain types of rice and so on. Absorption of iron from certain products, uh, we can see here that meat and fish, uh, iron absorption rate is extremely high. Soybeans have the highest iron absorption rate of all the plants products. Then go eggs, rice, spinach and black bread with iron absorption rate about 1 or 3 percent which is quite poor. Turning to recommendations on nutrition according to traditional Chinese medicine, we find out that one should eat products of black and red pigmentation as these very products would provide iron to the body. Such products listed here. It is black rice, black jujube, black sesame eggplant, black mushrooms, seaweed, cuttlefish, squid, tupang, oolong tea, and red beans, red uh, unpeeled peanuts, red jujube, and so on. It is necessary to specify this type of rice as it should be an irreplaceable companion for people suffering from blood emptiness. It is black rice or zizania. It is quite available on the market and it nourishes yin and replenishes kidneys, nourish, nourishes and moves the blood, cleanses liver and moistens the intestine. It is called longevity rice or rice that replenishes blood. There is a quite effective analogue in Ayurvedic tradition. It is an Indian sesame. In 100 grams of sesame is contained about 15 milligrams of iron, which is one of the highest rate of portion of iron in a plant product. Deficiency of other micro and macro elements can also cause anemia. It is necessary to include into the diet products containing those elements. For example, copper is needed as it participates in the process of erythropoiesis. Daily need of copper is 2 or 3 milligrams. Products rich in copper are first of all crops, legumes, mushrooms, berries and so on. And as you see, vegetarians have a wide choice here. Manganese, which is also important uh, for the process of creation of blood, is contained uh, in cereals, crops, legumes, greens, vegetables such as beetroot, pumpkin, berries and blackcurrants and cranberries and raspberries. Zinc deficiency may also lead to anemia. Daily need of zinc is 10 to 15 milligrams. It stimulates the process of creation of hemoglobin and erythrocytes. It is contained in yeast, meat products, cheeses, legumes, grains, mushrooms and chicken eggs. Cobalt deficiency also leads to anemia. It potentiates absorption of iron in the intestine and its use for the synthesis of hemoglobin and red blood cells are very important is very important. The daily requirement is only uh, 0 0.2 milligrams. Cobalt is rich in meat byproducts, milk, legumes, grains, cereals, gooseberry, black currant, raspberry, parsley, beets, pears, cherries, peanuts, almonds, and apricots. Honey is a product rich in various microelements. Dark honey is preferable as it is uh, microelements that make it darken darker. Honey contains fructose in vast and as we already know fructose works towards iron absorption. Here is a recipe providing iron and helping to improve iron absorption. A glass of warm water with a slice of lemon and uh, two and a half tablespoons of honey. 
In case of developed uh, iron deficiency in a patient, it is not possible to remove it without iron drugs. And here traditional medicine offers unique remedy uh, Chandra Prabha. Now let's turn to herbal therapy. A herb that should be first into your mind when you give recommendations to people suffering from emptiness of blood is Angelica sinensis. In traditional Chinese medicine it is called Dan Gui. Dan means proper, Gui means restoration. It restores energy and blood. It has certain chemical components that stimulate the process of blood creation. It is hard to overestimate the benefits of this plant in treatment of anemia as it influences the processes of hematopoiesis as well as processes of absorption and uh, absorption of micro and micro elements. There is a drug called Dangui Van uh, that is also extremely hand handy in treatment of anemia. Another plant which is traditionally used in China in treatment of anemia is Dimocarpus langan. It cherishes the blood, nourishes spleen. The most important capacity of this plant is to strengthen resistance of tissues to the lack of oxygen, which is extremely important for people having anemia, as in a state of chronic hypoxia, tissues constantly suffer from the lack of oxygen. There is a type of eight treasures tea that restores the blood. It consists of jujube red, jujube black, dried longan, dried uh, leech, dried goji berries, dried rhizome of Chinese angelica, uh, dangui, and red sugar, and a long tea. Clinical herbal therapy points out several herbs stimulating blood creation. They are listed on the left. Uh, most valuable herbs are highlighted in red. They contain iron in, in vast and stimulate erythropoiesis. But if you want to create a really effective herbal composition, it is necessary to add herbs having other effects such as plants containing zinc, copper, ma manganese, such uh, plants as highlander, birch leaf and anise. Also such plants that stimulate formation of uh, interferon, such as plantain, isle, uh, island moss and fall food. Plants containing acids that stimulate the production of interleukin, plants that stimulate the metabolism, plants that restore vitamin balance. After having gone through many sources, uh, talking to many well-known specialists, Dr. Alexa Rokin developed his own herbal composition for treatment of emptiness of blood. It contains nettle, strawberry, bur marigold, which is important because it contains manganese in vast is, uh, and is being powerful stimulator of hematopoiesis. It also contains licorice rhizome, primula officinalis, leaves, dill, dog rose berries, rowan berries and black currant. This composition is a great source of iron, zinc, manganese and other micro and micro elements, contains hematopoietic biologically active substances that increase production of erythropoietin, interleukin-1, uh, contains vitamins including absorbic acid, Asorbic acid, I'm sorry, of one liter of infusion, take uh, 100 and 150 milligrams three, four times a day before meals for three, four months in the growing moon. An Ayurvedic scheme of the therapy, you can see here Chavan Prasham, uh, one, two teaspoon, three uh, times a day before meals in growing moon, but it is not enough as we need uh, to influ influence Ranjaka Pita. And the best plant for this purpose is aloe. Aloe juice or aloe infusion. You, we need 30 drops two or three times a day before meals in veining moon. It is also important to take remedies containing iron such as uh, bhasma for two weeks in new moon period and uh, chandra prabha. Uh, we can also take amalaki in new moon period one week before and one week after and additionally ashwagandha and shatavari. Chandra Prabha consists of wide variety of plants such as uh, Piper longum, Plumbaga zilanicum, Emblica officinalis and others. And finally unique reflexive points or marmas. The point that I would like to start with is Ge Shu point. Ge means diaphragm, Shu means point. It is located on the back in the region of uh, diaphragm 
1.5 tunes to the outside from the spot below the spinous pro process of the seventh thoracic vertebra. It is one of the eight center points, the point of concentration of blood, versatile in treatment of all the blood disorders. You can influence uh, the point through reflexotherapy, acupressure and Veda laser. In Ayurveda there is Marma that is located in the same region as Geshu. It is a uh, Bruhati Marma, it stimulates expansion and also being located at the bottom rim of the plate bone, it influences Ranjaka Pitta. We can influence the point through massage with Mahanarayan oil, acupressure, laser and moxibustion. The next point, and it is another key point, is the blood sea or Xui Hai. It is translated as the sea of blood. It is located just above the kneecap. This point strengthens and moves the blood. Do you remember the skin that I showed uh, that showed the value of points from the perspective of hematopoiesis according to age before 30 and after 30? This is the very point that has a great influence uh, on blood cre creation in the childhood. Though it doesn't lose its efficacy in adolescence, but after 30 it is better to use points having projection at the corresponding bones. Another important marma is Charana marma. It is a great in stimulation of Yanavata which moves the blood. Thus influencing this point you stimulate blood circulation and venous return. Another unique point is Xuan Zhong. It is a centralization point of the bone marrow. So it has a very strong systematic effect of the bone marrow in general and a great blood restoration effect. You can influence this point through reflexotherapy, acupressure, laser, moxibustion, warming and uh, corporeal therapy. The eternal youth point Zhu San Li is also used in a complex therapy in treatment of anemic syndrome. We already discussed this point in previous lectures. It restores energy and blood, harmonizes functioning of spleen, stomach, strengthens qi, recovers pass passability of channels and collaterals. The sea of qi energy point qi high, it may be helpful in, to influence the point in cases of chronic blood loss as well as in treating female disorders. Let's draw a conclusion. In order to provide an effective treatment, the specialist should know how to identify different types of anemia, know how to generate a proper diet for the patient, which is quite easy if you use the upgraded version of diet therapy module. The key remedies are honey, chevan prasha, maloya, bhasma, Chandra Prabha Amalaki. It is also necessary to use replacement therapy drugs containing iron, influence corresponding reflexive points and marmas. Dear friends, thank you for your attention. Here you can see our contacts. Goodbye.